Space. At last, a silent, star-lit vantage point from which to watch and learn more about our own planet. Communication and research satellites circle our globe. Manned space stations have been built and orbited. Laboratories and telescopes free from the limitations of the atmosphere. But space, with all of its potential benefits to mankind, presents a new source of troubling concerns as well. If the United States is to retain its present freedom to visit this exciting new frontier and to protect its territories on Earth so vulnerable from above, it must develop the capability to meet those who might challenge its right to do so. It must be able to project force quickly across great distances against weapons such as nuclear-armed ballistic missiles or against aggressive foreign machinery in space. I call upon the scientific community in our country those who gave us nuclear weapons to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace, to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. Project Whitehorse, underway at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, is developing the technology to produce a high-energy particle beam to selectively examine, disable, or even destroy a dangerous object in space from a great distance without harming innocent objects which might be near it. Whitehorse-type device in space would allow valuable decision-making time for the United States in the event of a limited threat. It would also provide protection against an accidental missile launch or form an effective first line of defense should anyone launch a real attack. A high-energy, uncharged particle beam has a tremendous capability for penetration. That's the key to Whitehorse. No part of an aggressive space machine would be able to withstand its penetrating rays. A dangerous missile or space weapon could be simply and quickly disabled by destroying one of its more vulnerable components. Early in the White Horse program, Los Alamos scientists used their unique meson physics facility accelerator to determine the intensity with which a particle beam might be expected to reach its target. They found that high-energy, negatively charged hydrogen could be used to produce a beam that would maintain a small diameter over long distances. But aiming the beam was still a problem. Charged particles are affected by the magnetic field of the Earth. A beam of such particles is very difficult to aim over long distances. Positive ions, usually used in high-energy accelerators, cannot be easily neutralized after acceleration. However, fusion energy experiments show that a significant portion of a negative ion beam can be easily converted to neutral particles which will travel in a straight line through space to their target at near the speed of light. Scientists have examined the possibility of producing a source of negative hydrogen ions sufficiently concentrated to achieve high intensity at the target. <laughs> Computer programs used to design the Los Alamos Mazan physics facility and other high energy accelerators around the world indicate that a machine like Whitehorse is possible. Close-range experiments showed that such a beam would be effective against high explosives, detonators, or electronic components, and even structural components. However, an experimental program was needed to check computer predictions, since no compact accelerator had ever been built that would develop the beam intensity needed in such a space-based neutral beam device. These experiments are currently the main thrust of the White Horse program, and they're well on their way toward successful completion. 
He's expected to sort of <laughs> that, that's what scatter out. Be that's that's the what field surprised. is going yeah. down yeah. in the accelerating section. At some point, okay. it, it falls behind mm -hmm. the uh, <coughs> synchronous so phase to the point where it can no longer be accelerated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. beyond that point. Right. But it, it does mm -hmm. get accelerated up to that point. Mm -hmm. The White Horse Accelerator System consists of several parts or stages. First, an ion source to provide a tight, high-current beam. Beam characteristics at the source determine the maximum intensity which eventually reaches a target. Second, an injector to accelerate the beam to an appropriate speed and form it into clusters for injection into the next stage. Third, a linear accelerator, or LINAC, that uses radio frequency electric fields to elevate the beam energy to its final value. Fourth, focusing and steering optics to direct the beam to its target. And fifth, a gas cell to strip electrons from the negative ions, neutralizing the beam so that it will not be affected by the Earth's magnetic field. Let's start with the ion source. Los Alamos investigations use an ion source that produces a high-energy pulsed negative hydrogen ion beam. High-energy continuous beams of negative hydrogen have been produced. Prospects for useful currents look good. Specially designed electronics gather data for diagnosis before the beam enters the next or injector stage. In this case, a radio frequency quadrupole accelerator, or RFQ, developed at Los Alamos. The successful development of the RFQ injector by Los Alamos scientists represents a major step forward in the White Horse program. The RFQ is an all-metal device with properties determined largely by machining during construction. It replaces the prohibitively large, complex, and comparatively delicate Cockroft Walton injector normally used in particle accelerators. On the accelerator test stand, the RFQ injector accelerates the beam to its next stage. The drift tube LINAC is of conventional design. Using radar power sources, the negative ions are accelerated during half a cycle, then shielded by drift tubes during the other half. There is no doubt that a LINAC can be built to accelerate a beam to the final necessary energy level. In a series of successive boosts, particles can be accelerated without prohibitively high voltages. The particles are guided through the accelerator by magnetic lenses in the drift tubes. Conventional lenses use copper wire wound on iron cores and are quite massive. White horse lenses are light, compact, samarium cobalt permanent magnets another significant development in accelerated technology. Next comes the optical system to focus the beam on target. Final optics have been designed. Lenses and bending magnets of rare earth materials may once again significantly reduce the mass to be placed in orbit. Accelerator length is another important consideration when dealing with delivery into space. The higher the energy needed in an accelerator, the greater the length required. Past experiments and computer simulations indicate that it's possible to maintain beam quality at high acceleration rates if these higher rates are introduced progressively along the beam path. Use of such acceleration steps would significantly shorten the distance needed to achieve a given final energy. Aiming a device such as Whitehorse requires special procedures. Experiments to determine scientific aspects of pointing are presently underway. Final issue to be resolved before testing a Whitehorse device in space is the matter of power supply. Large amounts of prime power will probably be required to deliver the desired energy beam to the target. Scientists have been developing a variety of power sources for projects in space, both rocket-driven turbines and nuclear reactors. Now they're considering the means of increasing output from such systems to meet demands of projects such as Whitehorse.
The efficiency with which prime power can be converted to radio frequency energy is an important factor. The development of the Soviet concept, the Giracon, promises much higher efficiencies than those presently available from standard amplifiers. Whitehorse scientists at Los Alamos were given an important task to determine the scientific feasibility of a strategic concept, a machine stationed in space capable of defending the United States from accidentally or deliberately launched nuclear missiles. Their work is proceeding well. Whitehorse is a program vital to our nation's defense, a high-technology, non-nuclear response to the threat of nuclear arms, a device designed to generate a beam useful in space but incapable of penetrating the atmosphere to the Earth below. A defense concept impossible to use against the Earth in an aggressive role. Whitehorse, a powerful guardian of peace, armed and ready, not to fight people, but to destroy weapons. Constantly alert as it glides silently through the vacuum of space. <laughs>